West Virginia, 1945. The Sodder family wound down their celebrations on Christmas Eve. Father George, Mother Jenny, and their nine children hoped to have a lazy Christmas as they all went to bed. Shortly after midnight, the phone rang. Jenny answered it. The woman on the other end asked for someone Jenny never heard of. You have the wrong number, Jenny said. The woman laughed and hung up. A few minutes later, Jenny returned to bed. She was soon woken by a heavy thud on the roof. The noise was strange, but Jenny went back to sleep. Her slumber did not last long as she woke up to the smell of smoke. The office George used was on fire. After a few frantic moments, the parents and four of the nine children escaped the inferno. But what of the other five? Firefighting in West Virginia in 1945 wasn't as easy as it is now. Resources and manpower were scarce. While Jenny went to a neighbor's to call for help, George tried to drive his truck up to the second-story window to see if he could help his other children. Despite working fine that day, the truck would not start. The house burned to ash. There were no traces of the trapped children. It was said the fire could have burned hot enough to completely destroy the bodies. However, experts don't believe that. Jenny contacted a crematorium where an employee told her that high heat for an extended period of time wouldn't completely destroy a body. Bones would remain. Nicaragua, 2016 A woman identified as Yasmina was found in a cave near her home after being reported missing for a week. She claimed a group of small men lured her up a hill where they forcibly abducted her. They took her to a cave and held her there until authorities showed up. The little men disappeared without a trace. How did the authorities know where Yasmina was? The woman's family contacted a local witch who, through supernatural means, told the family where their missing loved one was kept. An interesting postscript. Another girl was allegedly kidnapped by similar gnomes and held in the same cave 15 years earlier. Wisconsin, 1974. Catherine Lynn Soberg attended her prom with her boyfriend at the local recreation center. During the evening, she got into an argument with him and stepped outside to get some air. She was never seen again. The boyfriend passed three lie detector tests and was ruled out as a suspect. To this date, the case remains cold. An interesting postscript. Six years after Soberg's disappearance, Tim Hack and Kelly Drew disappeared after leaving a wedding reception at the same recreation center. Their bodies were found in a nearby forest. Authorities determined that they had been murdered. In 2009, DNA evidence linked the murders of Hack and Drew to Edward Wayne Edwards, a drifter who had been connected to five other murders. However, he died before the truth could come out. It's not believed he was responsible for the disappearance of Soberg because he was not in the area at that time. Belgium, 1944. An American B-17 made an unscheduled and unplanned landing at an Allied airbase. The RAF unit couldn't get a hold of the crew by radio. The landing was rough, but the men figured it was an emergency, so they prepared for the worst. They didn't prepare themselves for what came next. The plane came to a stop, but its engines roared on. No one approached the plane for several minutes. When they did, 
they found the plane completely void of life. Half-eaten candy bars and a magazine were the only signs that the crew had been on the plane. The parachutes were still stowed away. It appeared that the plane flew and landed itself. It's assumed the plane's engines malfunctioned after taking a hit. The crew tossed what they could to lighten the load, but it was not enough. They bailed out of the plane, leaving the landing to fate. Italy, 700 BC. Romulus was the founder and first king of Rome. Since his reign was well before proper documentation, his life and deeds cannot be confirmed as fact. Even the details surrounding his death are mere rumors. In the Campus Martius, an area near where the Pantheon is now, Romulus was reviewing his troops when a sudden storm appeared. The rain fell and windswept curtains. Visibility on the ground became nil. Flash floods popped up, adding more danger to the disaster in the making. When the storm finally passed, Romulus was nowhere to be seen. Witnesses claimed that the storm swept him away. Others claimed that his generals used the storm as an opportunity to assassinate him. His most faithful followers believed he ascended to heaven to stand with his father, the god of war, Ares. New York, 1826 William Morgan held a variety of occupations in his life. Stonecutter, bricklayer, storekeeper. However, it was his time as an author which led to his mysterious disappearance. Morgan sought to join the fraternal organization known as the Freemasons. He was already familiar with their workings and, for reasons only known to him, he wanted to join the group. The Freemasons have always been shrouded in mystery, but what they did not hide was their disapproval of Morgan. They refused him entry into their organization, disapproving of his character. In retaliation, he announced he was going to write and publish a damning article which would expose the Freemasons' secrets. The print shop, which would have printed Morgan's expose, was set on fire. Morgan was then arrested for supposedly not repaying a loan and stealing a shirt and a tie. Morgan was released, but then rearrested for allegedly failing to pay a $2 tavern bill. While the jailer was away, a group of men convinced his wife to release Morgan into their custody. Morgan was never seen again. Wisconsin, 1953. 15-year-old Evelyn Hartley was hired to babysit the 20-month-old daughter of a local professor named Vigo Rasmussen. Evelyn's father, Richard, called the Rasmussen house several times after she failed to check in as planned. There was no answer. Richard drove to the house and found that the doors were locked and the lights and radio were on. Furniture had obviously been moved around to different places. Richard found Evelyn's shoes in different rooms, one shoe upstairs and one downstairs. He also found her broken glasses upstairs. Every room in the house was locked except one in the basement. A window there had its screen leaning against the outside wall. Pry marks were found on some windows. Footprints were found inside the house, as was blood. In fact, there were bloody handprints in a garage and in a nearby house. Evelyn's charge was completely unharmed. Evelyn was missing. 
Law enforcement officers, the National Guard, Boy Scouts, Civil Air Patrol, U.S. Air Force, and local college students and faculty participated in a search. Over 1,000 people in total. The infamous killer, Ed Gain, was considered a suspect because he was visiting a relative a few blocks away from the scene. However, he passed two lie detector tests and no evidence was found on his property at the time of his arrest. Oregon, 1950. 16-year-old Thomas Ritchie liked to go fishing along the scenic Rogue River. A cable car was strung up over a spot of the river, and he could usually be found there when he wasn't in school and finished with his chores. On June 11th, he set out for his usual spot. He was never seen again. His fishing pole and several fish were found inside the cable car, but there was no sign of the teenager. It was assumed he fell into the water and drowned. To this day, his body has never been found. Here's a true and disturbing coincidence regarding this case. Thomas's mother's first husband and their six-year-old son drowned in a fishing accident in the same area 20 years before Thomas's disappearance. England, 1763. Owen Parfit was a 60-year-old man who told wild stories of his youth. He might have been a pirate or a great soldier, but upon his disappearance, he was an invalid, paralyzed, unable to move without assistance. He lived with his sister in the town of Shepton Mallet. One fine day, he had his sister and a neighbor help him sit on the porch. He liked sitting on the porch. He liked the tranquility of feeling the breeze blow and watching the workers across the road. It was a contrast to the life he allegedly once led. When his sister came out to help him back inside, the old man was gone. His chair was empty. The workers across the way didn't see anyone come or go. A paralyzed cripple just left. China, 2020. Fang Bin used YouTube and other social media sites to share images of Wuhan during the COVID-19 pandemic. These images include a video showing the piling up of corpses in front of a Wuhan hospital. He was arrested several times in February 2020. Following his final arrest, two fellow whistleblowers were released. However, there has been no sign of Fang Bin. Florana, 1934. Florana is an island located in the eastern Pacific Ocean. It's a haven for those who want to experience peace and quiet. The island is also home to an enduring mystery. In 1933, Eloise Werborn de Wagner Bosquet, a young Austrian woman, arrived on the island with her two young German lovers, Robert Philipson and Rudolf Lorenz. She also brought a servant. She announced plans to build a luxury hotel, but spent most of the time parading around the island in skimpy outfits. On March 27th, 1934, in the middle of the day, a scream tore through the tiny island. The Baroness of the Galapagos and one of her lovers, Philipson, were never seen again. According to the other lover, Lorenz, Eloise and Philipson had embarked on a boat to Tahiti. However, there were no records of such a departure at that time. A few days later, Lorenz left Florana in a hurry. He was headed to South America on a boat with a Norwegian fisherman. 
Their mummified bodies were found months later, stranded on a waterless island where their boat had wrecked. North Carolina, 2008 This was Jamie Fraley's third visit to the hospital for a stomach flu she just couldn't shake. She told a friend over the phone that she was getting a ride from somebody, but didn't say who. Jamie never made it to the hospital, nor has she been seen since. The prime suspect in Fraley's disappearance was her fiancé's father, Ricky Simmons Sr. The man had a criminal record, serving six years in prison for manslaughter after strangling a girlfriend to death. Simmons Sr. lived and worked in the same complex as Fraley. He had driven the missing woman to the hospital the second time on the day she disappeared, making him one of the last people to see her. Two months to the day after Fraley disappeared, Simmons died under unbelievable circumstances. A former girlfriend of Simmons had recently filed a restraining order against him. The girlfriend noticed a horrible odor in her car. Inside her trunk was Simmons, dead. The ex-girlfriend's car keys were found on the man. Simmons' death was ruled as an accidental heat stroke. It's theorized that Simmons was hiding in the trunk in order to ambush his ex-girlfriend. We'll never know for sure, nor will we know what role, if any, he had in Jamie Fraley's disappearance. <laughs>